We have with us today the Ford Territory. Let's check it out. So the Ford Territory recently received this new second generation for the Philippines. It was launched at the Manila International Auto Show and we're finally able to take it out on a test drive today. The Ford Territory has been one of Ford's most popular models in the Philippines ever since it was first released in 2020. Now we have with us the second generation and it may just repeat that success with over 1,500 units already sold since its launch a few months ago. Let's check it out. What we have is the entry-level 2023 Ford Territory 1.5 Titanium and it's priced at 1,325,000 Philippine Pesos. And Ford has definitely gone all out with this one wearing a whole new design language. A huge departure from the old one. It's more aggressive, more sporty, larger, and just much better in general in my opinion. Everything is also more cohesive now unlike with the old version. In front we have a split headlight design with the LED DRLs on top and the LED headlights and fog lights below. The DRL by the way also acts as the turn signals when in use. We also have a large front grille with chrome inserts for that premium touch and if you notice, the upper portion looks like it's ready to become a light bar. The side shows how much bigger this actually is because it's 50 millimeters longer. Sounds small, but it shows. It's also more upright unlike the slanted look on the old one so we have more space inside which we'll get into in a bit. Then we also have 190 millimeters of ground clearance. By the way, I'm not a huge fan of these wheels as they kinda look too basic but they are 18 inches wrapped in GT tires. And towards the back, we have a much more uniquely Ford design with its full LED taillights which look great when in use. Like before, the territory name is spelled out across here and thankfully, Ford has done away with the fake exhaust tips. Finally, instead of one long rear fog light in the center, we have one small one on each side. By the way, please don't use these on normal evenings, stop blinding others. Anyway, opening the manual tailgate for this variant, it reveals the usual amount of space for a compact SUV. It is actually a bit more than before, so it was definitely improved. And now we're inside the Ford Territory Titanium. And as you can see here, it's a totally different interior design compared to the previous generation. So it's a lot more premium, it makes use of a lot of horizontal lines, more straight lines compared to before. And we have larger screens and also materials have been greatly improved. So you can really tell that this is a real Ford product compared to the previous one because it feels a lot more solid. We have better materials, so we have here in the dashboard soft touch materials, soft touch plastics, we have some leather over here and we have this really nice looking faux wood design. And again, they feel more solid so everything feels well built, everything feels built for tough as they say. But yeah, it does all feel really good, so much more improved, so much better compared to before. And also you'll notice that we have a two-tone interior color scheme over here. So we have a blue and black interior color scheme. They call this peacock blue and it's actually for this variant, the Titanium. The Titanium X, the top of the line variant of this new territory gets a different interior color scheme, but that's a different review. And just really this overall design here just looks better on the eyes. It looks a lot more premium. It looks, it feels a lot more expensive than this car actually is. And then moving here to the steering wheel, we have a new steering wheel, of course. It has a better design, a little bit sportier, and it, it is also really, really nice to hold. It has a very nice leather material, and it even has some blue stitching over there. On the left, we have our controls for our cruise control. On the right, our audio and trip computer controls. We'll, just, we'll get to that in just a bit. And the steering wheel is now a lot more adjustable compared to before. So as you can see, we now have better adjustment now and it does give us a more optimal driving position. And also the horn, it's just your typical Ford horn. Very much, pretty much the same as the previous one. Well, that didn't sound nice. That's why you should get the Pia Auto Style Horn like we have on our Honda CRV. Sounds great, right? So make that sound like this. Get the Pia Auto Style Horn on Shopee or Lazada or through the links in the description and comments. And then here we have a 7-inch instrument cluster, digital instrument cluster. That's only for this variant because the other variant gets a larger screen. So anyway, here we have our information for a trip computer so we have our trip one trip two the typical odometer fuel economy that we have a tire pressure monitoring system and our auto start stop indicator if it's on or off so yeah that's pretty much the only thing we can find here unfortunately we don't have much 
information to find here unlike in other cars these days then moving towards the right we have a large 12 inch touchscreen infotainment system this one is also much better than before so the one the old one had this like quad display which really it wasn't good at all and also it was a little bit uh, on the slower side on the laggy side this one is a lot more responsive but still it does have the tendency to feel a bit laggy unfortunately but at least they also have here now ford font so it looks really part with the car and the brand but yeah it is still a bit delayed so that's really unfortunate but at least very everything here is very easy to find it's very easy to navigate the screen and of course we have wireless apple carplay and android auto which of course makes it better but still it is i wish that this was more responsive and also if you'll notice it's a bit far so if you're just driving you really always have to lean forward at least for me with short arms and then another thing is when you want to use the climate control the aircon control so if you're in the apple carplay screen for example you have to press the ford logo first and then that's only when you'll be able to control the aircon so the temperature the fan speed everything is in the screen unfortunately so i was hoping that with this generation they would go with traditional controls down here but unfortunately like every other chinese car designed in china this one still has the controls on the screen but again this is a ford product not a jmc rebadge like before then moving down here we do have a few controls for the aircon so we have the fan speed and the automatic button and our defoggers and despite them being touch sensitive buttons compared to the buttons that the actual buttons that we had before at least they are haptic so at least they do have that kind of that feeling of response when you press it and they are quite responsive as well then moving further down we have a wireless phone charger then over here we have our electronic gear selector so it's actually a rotary knob so very simple to use just twist it to put it on drive and neutral reverse whatever gear you want to be on just turn it around unfortunately we don't have any manual shifting capabilities for this car unfortunately that's a thing with most new cars today so they don't have manual shifting you only have this l button for low gear unfortunately and also if you put it on if you accidentally leave the car on drive you just have to turn off the car and it will actually turn back to park on its own just like in the ford everest then moving further we have our electronic parking brake with auto hold and our auto start auto start stop function over here we have our parking assist and we have our parking sensors off button then moving a little bit further back we also have some controls for the screen some buttons like the home button back and music phone shortcuts but unfortunately there's no knob here to control the screen considering it's quite far then also we have the volume knob which really will annoy lots of people because it just looks bad when you turn it but anyway maybe that's just me it really annoys me actually then over here we have two cup holders so you can actually remove them or rather hide them or put them put the divider on the side which turns it into a storage area instead of a cup holder and also just to add the material used here in the center console i'm not a fan of it it's too much piano black plastic which does have the tendency to get covered in fingerprints scratches over time so you'll probably need to buy some kind of protection for this and then here just below the armrest we do have loads of storage spaces we have this slideable storage as well which is of course very helpful especially when you do want to hide something that's here just slide it back and close the cover and also might i add this cover really really feels very solid and it feels really it just feels really good and then for the seats they are also really really nice they're very supportive they have really nice bolsters they also have the two-tone color scheme and it's all leather it's partially faux leather but it also has some real leather on it so it's black and blue and it also feels really soft it's a lot softer than before it's of course the driver's seat is powered and it does offer lots of support it has lumbar adjustment as well i hope i can try this out on a longer road trip soon and now we're at the back seat of the territory titanium and this will actually be pretty much the same as the titanium x so this is pretty much what you can expect over there but anyway it does feel a lot more spacious than before so the seats also feel more comfortable they have a better position although i must say that they do lack a bit of thigh support over here so your legs will be either going up 
if you stretch it, it just it just feels a bit like it lacks thigh support. But again, they're very comfortable, same material as in front. And we have loads of space over here again. So loads of leg room, knee room, foot room, pretty much unlimited for any passenger here, especially those who are my size, an average Filipino height of five feet and seven inches. Then as for what you get over here, we do have two air vents. Thankfully, two, not one, just like some other Chinese cars. And we have one USB port over here and also forgot to mention in front we do have a lot of storage underneath the center console which comes with two usb ports one usb a and one usb c and one 12 volt power outlet so anyway going back here we also have two back pockets we have same materials here as in front soft touch on top a little bit of hard touch plastic and leather on the armrest and that forward as well so that follows through from the front to the back unfortunately we don't have a panoramic sunroof like the titanium x and the previous generation titanium which is the equivalent of this variant but yeah some people don't want that some people will want that so there's really no problem with that and of course here we have a center armrest with two cup holders and now we're driving the ford territory titanium and this is actually not my first time to try it out because i was already able to try this out the day before it was launched but that is only a very very short drive so this time we finally get to drive it on real roads so first things first this is powered by the same engine as the previous generation so it still gets a 1.5 liter turbocharged ecoboost gasoline engine but it does receive more horsepower and more torque so it now has 160 horsepower and 248 newton meters of torque and also gets a new transmission a seven speed wet type dual clutch transmission and as soon as you get started when driving this you can instantly feel how much it has actually changed despite having the same engine it so, feels it feels so much better now the power delivery is so much better it feels quicker a lot quicker despite just the small horsepower increase so that was actually a lot so it, it actually helped a lot with this vehicle i guess it also helps that it has a dual clutch transmission because it does allow for quicker shifts and the old one it had a cvt that one it did feel a bit droney especially when you wanted to do a little bit of harder acceleration some overtaking this one can do all that without any problem what i do have to say though is that because of that dual clutch it does have the tendency to feel a bit laggy so there is that when it, when you're coming from a complete stop it does feel a bit delayed which is something that the previous generation did not have because with the cvt it was a lot more responsive this one it does have a little bit of delay especially when overtaking if you want to if you want to have a sudden burst of acceleration it will take a minute or rather a second to decide whether you have to go or not but at least the transmission itself is not jerky it doesn't you know it doesn't feel like those from other chinese vehicles that just have unlimited jerks unlimited lag unlimited everything that's bad this one is a really good transmission still and then another thing is the brakes which actually feel a bit weird so the previous generation has a very tight feeling brake brake pedal this one it does feel a bit light but when you press it a little bit more it does give you too much braking power so i guess they have to retune the brakes on this i don't know if it's just this particular unit but yeah they have to retune the brakes for sure but anyway other things that are good about this new territory the steering and handling is something that has been improved a lot as well steering is still very light typical ford every ford has light steering this one is still the same but this feels more sporty to drive it has a lot more feedback now it has a little bit more of weight it has a little bit more weight to it so they did retune that as well and it feels so much better it feels like you're more connected to the road now compared to before handling wise it does feel a bit more planted compared to before as well i'm not surprised considering that this does feel wider as well so the previous generation was actually wider by a millimeter this one is narrower but it does have a more boxy shape a lower a wider body shape compared to the previous generation so that did help make this feel a bit more planted a bit more firmer on the road ride quality and nvh insulation has also been improved not by much but it is improved so road noise it's actually pretty quiet as long as you're in the proper speeds if you do get a little bit higher especially on the highway let's say around 80 kilometers 100 kilometers per hour the noise does start to creep into the cabin but it's still a lot improved compared to the previous generation also compared to the previous generation vibrations are a lot less in this cabin the engine isn't you don't feel the vibrations from the engine as much as before especially when idling at stop signs stop lights also 
the engine noise doesn't come as much into the cabin as well especially when doing those overtakes hard accelerations it does feel a bit more refined but still it's not that much improved compared to before but definitely improved and another great thing now is visibility because we actually have much larger windows much larger rear windshield front windshield everything feels larger in this car right now and the 360 camera which i mentioned earlier was also improved so it's a lot more hd compared to before so there's really no problem when it comes to visibility in this car and also we have blind spot monitoring which we'll talk about the ADAS of this car in just a bit and yeah overall this Ford Territory is actually a lot better really than the previous generation and fuel economy this has also been improved a lot the previous generation was known to be a bit of a gas guzzler so now we're able to do as much as 11 kilometers per liter inside the city with a decent amount of heavy traffic a lot of stops so it's actually way improved compared to before and then on the highway wasn't able to really check but i did do a proper fuel economy test during our mini media drive with the territory which by the way if you haven't seen that video be sure to check it out as well when once it's uploaded the link will be available of course in the description of this video but anyway during that time we did get to get you were able to achieve around 10 kilometers per liter in combined driving so that is a lot of uphill driving that's that uses a lot of fuel by the way a lot of heavy traffic inside the city some heavy traffic on the highway as well really this new territory has improved a lot and that's what i've been saying since we started doing this review and it really is because that's the way it is and really overall this is just really better but it, we don't end there so let's talk about the territory the new territory and the old territory from an owner's perspective okay so now we have with us our videographer sometimes videographer sometimes motorcycle reviewer we have martin over here and he drives a ford territory 2021 the yes 2021 so and the thoughts more about this new territory uh first it's i guess on the pants and it's designed but it's now it looks bigger compared to mine the post inside the man was spacious top Salikod, you can fit like five people na comfortable. Sila dun sa likod. Then ang ano naman yung five people sa likod. Ay five, <laughs> three people sa likod. Ay well, how about sa engine? Ano naman ano yung masasabi mo? Sa engine niya, since nasanay ako sa CVT, mas na feel ko mas parang may power to when you like floor it because of the DCT. Yeah. Mas na feel mo may mas malakas yung power. Niya. And more horsepower and torque, diba? Yeah. The number shows. <laughs> Handling? Hmm. Pretty much the same. Or like... Same? Actually, same lang, yeah. Yeah. Planted pa rin naman siya. Which is better? Siguro sa driving, like, comfortable sa pag-drive. -pag Ito, kasi... Mas ma, mas pwede mo ilapit sa iyo yung ano yung steering wheel compared to the last gen kasi sa last gen medyo limited lang limited lang yung ano adjustment mo sa steering wheel so siguro mas comfortable ako dito mag-drive sa uh, sa driving sa pag-drive nito so diba ang daming may ayaw nitong new generation territory na owners ng ano same sa iyo yes. lalo na yung mga recent lang bumili mm -hmm. as in so much hate din yes but for you, would, would you buy this one? Lalo na considering that this also has less features, a bit less features compared to the, 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 to the one you have. Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, for the price, I would actually trade in yung territory ko ngayon, the last gen, to this one. Kasi yung comfortability niya pag nagda-drive with this, yung, yung steering wheel na pwede mo ilapit sa'yo. And siguro, the seat, yung seat niya sobrang lambot compared to the last gen. Yeah, for for the long term, I would get, I would trade in or like buy this one rather than the territory I have, even with less features. Mm, I guess so. If 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 pag sa inyo naman, pag feel nyo, you need the features and everything. Pero di pasok sa budget. You get the last gen. If also, like used, diba? yeah, if, if use as oh, and yeah, well, and brand new, of course. <laughs> And if yung the sunroof or the moonroof is your thing, 
like me, yes. Uh, get the last gen na lang. Kasi, yun, may sunroof ka na. Ito, wala. Well, yeah. just to note, kung ano yung mga features that this doesn't have anymore compared to the previous generation titanium. No more sunroof. No more adaptive cruise control. No more... What else? Lane departure warning, lane keep assist, I'm not sure. Pero we don't have that anymore here. And we also don't have what else. I think that's it, right? Yeah, sunroof. The it's the biggest difference. No more sunroof. sunroof. Uh -huh. And the adaptive cruise control. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the difference. Right? Mm -hmm. So still you'd rather get this one if you can. Yeah. Kaiti tong ano lang, itong base model na lang. No bias naman, right? No bias. <laughs> Anyway, before we end, I'd like to ask him one more question. Mm. Honest issues with your territory. Ah. So since wait, so yes. lots of people say port, yeah, right? mm -hmm. So as an owner of port territory for how long? Na? One year. More than a year. More yes. than a year. Any honest issues that you encountered? Siguro the only issue that I had was yung screen niya. Siguro sa software na yon na ayos sa Manila. Na nagili start siya or like namamatay yung screen ko, yung uh, speedometer and everything. Yung dito naman, yeah, usual, uh, occasionally, nag-restart, restart siya nung nakuha ko siya, like after, let's say, your car. Yeah, my car. After five months? And so? Pero, nung sinabi ko naman dun sa service nila, inayos nila, ngayon, for free, or nagbayad ka? Ah, uh, everything's for free. So, wala nang binayaran, I just told them na, oh, I have this issue, and then, Within the day, wala. Pagpunta ko doon, na-uwi ko rin yung territory if, uh, after nila maayos. Tsaka free service. Free service, yes. For three years, I think. Yeah, three years. I don't know if that's the case with this one. Mm -hmm. But this is not a paid ad, mm -hmm. so we can't talk. We won't yes. advertise this mm -hmm. car. Yun lang. That's the only issue I had sa territory ko. Like, besides that, everything is good. Okay. okay. All good. Ford already had a great product with the old territory. This one takes it a step further and improves where the old one had to. It's still not perfect but it surely is much better than it ever was.